Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker, and in today's video we're doing an NBA trade machine. We haven't done it in a while just because we've had the draft, we've had uh, the start of trade season, we've had free agency, there's just been too many things going on, but now that things have settled down at least a little bit, I know we just had the John Wall Russell Westbrook thing, but things have settled down enough to where we can start to kind of evaluate each of these rosters and who may or may not be in position to trade for, in this case, John Collins of the Atlanta Hawks. I've already made a few videos or made a point in a few videos uh, about the fact that I do think at some point John Collins will probably be moved just because the Hawks don't want to pay him in 2021. They just paid all these other players. They still have to give Trey Young a new contract. Just financially, it makes way more sense for them to potentially move on from him. And that's why he is the focus of today's trade machine video. Really quickly though, before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day, every day, all throughout the NBA offseason, so it is a great place for consistent NBA content, and we are very, very close to 100,000 subscribers. You can also leave a like rating on the video, helps me out a ton, lets me know that you're enjoying the content, and helps get it out to more people on YouTube, and you can hang out with me with various socials at the bottom of the screen outside of these videos. But with all that said, let's go ahead and talk about possible trade machine uh, suggestions for John Collins, the Atlanta Hawks. And first up is Alexander, who just, you know, decided to go ahead and start us off with a huge trade. In this case, it is John Collins going to the Houston Rockets, along with Tony Snell, Kevin Herter, DeAndre Hunter, uh, and multiple first round picks in exchange for James Harden. Of course, Harden is the guy that we're all kind of waiting on to be traded here. And the concept and the idea here is just that the Hawks are going for it, right? Like they're giving up picks, they're giving up young players, they're giving up all kinds of assets to build a Trey Young, James Harden, you know, Clint Capella, all these other young guys, these wings and stuff uh, in Atlanta group and see where they can go from there with the idea being that James Harden has been an incredible player with a supporting cast that yes, works well around him, but maybe wasn't the most talented supporting cast at times. I mean, Chris Paul obviously was very good. Russell Westbrook is very good. But in terms of the collection of talent, it's possible that Atlanta, even with giving up all these assets, can provide an opportunity for James Harden to have maybe one of the best supporting casts he's ever had, certainly in Houston for discounting the Oklahoma City thing. And it's obviously a huge, huge leap to give up this many young players, this many picks, this many assets in exchange for a player in Harden uh, that does not list Atlanta as a place that he would like to be traded to at the moment. But there's a possibility that exists here that he gets there and the Hawks are really, 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 really good. And that's enough to convince him to stay when his contract does run out in a few years. And that's what Atlanta is hoping for here. If for some reason this trade did go down, um, it would just add to another really, really good Eastern Conference team, potentially putting the Hawks in position to be like a top four, top five team in the Eastern Conference and really be a true threat depending on how some of their younger players develop. And for Collins specifically, he goes to a place in Houston where maybe the fit is a little bit questionable considering they just brought in Christian Wood, but if they can figure out how to play those two guys together in the front court, maybe he can qualify enough for the quote unquote franchise cornerstone young player type of player that Houston is seeking in return in a hardened trade. And you've got all these other picks and players as well. Herder can be good. Uh, you've got DeAndre Hunter as well that can be good on the wing. And all of these future firsts, including one from, from Oklahoma City. Now, is this a realistic deal? No, probably not. But it's still interesting to look at the package that Atlanta could potentially offer to Houston in a Harden trade that also involves John Collins. And they're kind of holding back some assets here as well. Guys like Cam Reddish could be involved here as well if they really, really wanted to go all in for Harden. Now, it's not necessarily something that I advise because you don't know if Harden would want to stay in Atlanta. You don't know how the Harden Trey Young thing would work. You don't even know if you'd be a good team, if I'm completely honest, because the defense would be certainly a question mark. Uh, but you, re you reunite Harden there uh, in Atlanta with Clint Capella. You've got Trey Young there. You've got shooting about wings. Maybe it worked. I don't know. I'd certainly be interested. Next up now is a trade suggestion from Alex. And he says that John Collins will be going to the Boston Celtics in exchange for Carson Edwards, Grant Williams, a second round pick from Oklahoma City, a 2021 lottery protected first from the Celtics, and a second round pick in 2022 via Charlotte. So the concept here is, again, the Hawks just don't want to pay John Collins. They know the contracts they just handed out to Gallinari and Bogdanovich. They know that Trey Young is going to need a new deal in two years. And paying John Collins what he wants to be paid, which is, according to him, a max contract, but probably is going to cost at least $20 million on his next contract if he continues the stats that he's put up in the past. All that reasoning, again, leads me to think that they could potentially move him, which means that his value really won't be what you would expect it to be in a trade because other teams are also going to have to reckon with the decision on what to pay for John Collins, which is why there's not a lot going on here when you're talking about a return 
to Atlanta. This is basically, we don't have to pay John Collins. We get back a rotation player in Grant Williams that was good for the Celtics at times, can provide some nice versatility in the front court. Carson Edwards can turn into a nice bench scoring guard, two second round picks, and the possibility uh, of getting an extra first in 2021 as well. A draft class that looks to be pretty deep and can add to the collection of draft picks that Atlanta already has, including that Oklahoma City first that we talked about in the previous trade, and continue to build up their asset pool to be able to potentially make another big trade down the road as well to add to this group. So I know at first glance, it doesn't look like a great deal for John Collins. I'm not saying that Atlanta should accept it, but there is at least a mindset here that would make sense for Atlanta. If they simply don't want to trade Collins, they're getting some rotation guys in return and they add another pick here as well to where they can potentially make an all-in trade later down the road, whether it be for Harden or Bradley Beal or whatever you know player becomes available here for Atlanta moving forward. For Boston, the Collins fit would certainly be interesting because you can either go with a really big lineup where you've got someone at the five, then Collins, Tatum Brown, and then you can go Walker or Smart as a bigger lineup, or you can run Collins at the five in a smaller lineup. And I think they have enough defense on the wings and otherwise to kind of make up for some of the mistakes that he could be making at the five spot, the lack of rim protection, things like that. So I actually really do like the fit of Collins there in Boston as well. Next up now is a trade from Charlie in which the Hawks receive Zach Collins and Zero Little in a second round pick in exchange for John Collins. And this is an interesting scenario because uh, Zach Collins is still a player that has talent, but has just never been able to either stay on the floor or doesn't quite have the strength necessary to play the five or the skills necessary to play the four. He's definitely a bit of a tweener and Portland might be ready to just kind of give up on him and get a much more proven player in John Collins and then give up a wing in his ear little that hasn't quite cracked the rotation yet for this team. Meanwhile, for Atlanta, contract stuff with Collins aside, with John Collins aside, you bring in Zach Collins, who's not going to replace John Collins in the rotation, but he can at least take up some minutes in the front court. And then another versatile young wing potentially to add to this group as well, Nazir Little, and the extra second round pick. Now, this is an outstanding value depending on your opinion of Zach Collins in exchange for John Collins. But again, when you're considering the contract stuff, getting another wing that could be something in Nazir Little isn't the worst case scenario here for Atlanta. Now, realistically, they probably need, Portland probably needs to add more value here for this to be a trade that Atlanta would actually think about accepting, but it's still an interesting one. Meanwhile, for Portland, I like the little boost of athleticism that John Collins would provide to this lineup as a rim roller or, you know, when Nurkic is off the floor or someone that has learned to space the floor relatively well at the four spot as well. And then you're looking at a lineup of Dame, CJ, you've got Robert Covington, John Collins, and Yusuf Nurkic. And that's the most complete lineup that Portland has had in years. And that would be a really, really interesting group to take a look at. So again, I like that Collins fit in Portland. Next up now is a really, really interesting one. This one coming from Jason. And in this scenario, the Bucks would get John Collins in exchange for DJ Wilson, Dante DiVincenzo, and two second round picks. Again, I don't want to reiterate the Collins thing too much in terms of the contract, but for Atlanta, you're getting DJ Wilson, who could take up some minutes in the front court. But most importantly, it's Dante DiVincenzo, a player that we have learned a lot of teams around the league do like. The Bucks really like him, uh, but I think they would consider moving him in this scenario uh, in exchange for John Collins. First, we'll talk about the Hawks. And then we'll talk about the Bucks. Uh, for the Hawks, it adds another wing to this young group and would be one of the more promising young wings on this roster as well. A potential long-term partner uh, for Trey Young in the backcourt, depending on what they do with this roster moving forward. As someone that can defend, can shoot, can play make a little bit as well. And looks like he's going to continue to grow in each of those areas. And then you're getting those two second round picks as well. But from a lineup standpoint, I like DiVincenzo's fit, depending on you know how all the other wings and perimeter guys work out now that they have with Bogdanovich and Hunter and Reddish and, and Gallinari. But still, you can never really have too many. I like DiVincenzo's fit. Meanwhile, for Milwaukee, seems like an odd fit, right? Bringing in someone like John Collins, but a little bit more of a boost to the offensive end of the floor as well. They've shown an ability to put together one of the best defenses in the league, regardless of personnel. I don't think that getting rid of DiVincenzo in exchange for someone like Collins would, would necessarily hurt them all that much in that category. And then you're looking at a lineup of Giannis, Drew Holiday, John Collins, uh, Brooke Lopez, and Chris Middleton, which still has plenty of versatility up and down the lineup and is a huge lineup as well, provided that Collins can, can continue to space the floor relatively well for this group, because obviously you need that around Giannis. Now, the problem here is it takes away um, a bit of the versatility on the perimeter and on the wings. You don't have as many guards to kind of mix and match throughout the game. And that can certainly be an issue for Milwaukee, but if they're just looking for an upgrade from a talent standpoint, 
and then you do the contract stuff later, I think this could be an interesting deal for them to take a look at. And last up now is one from Eli, in which he says that the uh, Atlanta Hawks will be getting Jared Culver, Josh Kogi, and a 2024 protected pick. I'm assuming it'd be first round pick, lottery protected probably would be conveyed in exchange for John Collins. And the reason this one is interesting to me is if you're looking at a hole on this Minnesota Timberwolves roster, it's pretty clearly at the four spot. They've got plenty of guards, they've got plenty of wings, they obviously have Carl Anthony Towns, but that four spot is a little bit odd because they don't really know if they're going to have to play one of their wings up a position at the four to make the lineup work or if they're just going to play Hernan Gomez for the spacing. Collins can kind of bridge that gap between someone that can provide a little bit of spacing, a little bit of perimeter stuff, a little bit of inside scoring, and be a really, really good you know, not backup five, but could play the five when Towns is off the floor and keep up that offense, that rim rolling stuff that he's always done really well at the five spot as well, which I think would be a really, really awesome fit for Minnesota, especially considering they're not giving up a ton here, assuming the pick, you know, is pretty heavily protected, which I would assume that it would be. Culver hasn't really shown much. Akogi is a good defender, uh, it, arguably a great defender, but offensively, he just hasn't found what he needs to do yet in the NBA from a shooting standpoint. And that's honestly perfect for Atlanta. They have time to develop those guys into better offensive players. They take their defensive potential for what it is. And if they can develop those guys into more, you know, versatile, good wing defenders for them, they're going to have a ton of those moving forward, which is more what they need than anything else now at this point as you look up and down their roster. So I think this could potentially be a win-win for both teams here in this trade. And yeah, that's going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. I appreciate you guys sending in your trade suggestions. As always, you can do that over on Twitter. Uh, or uh, in, in the Discord is a great place as well to suggest those trades, uh, as well as down in the comment section of these videos. But that is going to be the end of today's video. As I said, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, if you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day, and I will see you all next time.